what advice would you give all potential and or current student pilots? It's a great question. And it's a great question because there's things I realized about flight training. Here's the thing about every instructor out there, uh, every pilot really. Every single pilot and instructors have been student pilots themselves in the past. Um, for some it's been 50 years ago and for others it's been one year ago. But everyone uh, who's flying an airplane has at some point been a student pilot. And the reason I think this is a great question is as a student pilot myself, the view, the standpoint from which I've seen flight training and learning and the way I looked at it all was, I'm not saying it was a bad way, but it was very different than how I look at it today as someone who for a living, this is what I do, uh, this is my full-time passion, um, teaches and trains and um, gets pilots to do this better. And I sit right next to them, I'm a foot from them as we go through this journey together. And being in this position has enabled me to see flight training as a whole and being a student pilot and really learning in a whole new different way. And so I appreciate this question, I think it's a great question. So as you can imagine, there's a million and one things or pieces of advice that I would give to a new pilot starting out. And most of them you probably heard, you probably know. But the biggest thing, and if you watch these videos often, you probably maybe know where I'm going with this. The biggest thing that I could say, and this is where everything learning related begins. You could be a smart person. You could be a successful person. You could be uh, everything. But if you don't have, if you're missing this point, as a student pilot, especially as someone who's just starting out, and maybe it's been a minute since you learned and acquired a new skill and new knowledge in your life. The biggest thing is this. Here's the biggest piece of advice I could give you as a pilot, student pilot, there's nine five. It goes like this. Don't, and I know easier said than done, but I'll expand. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. You need to understand this. Let me break this down a little bit. You need to understand this. It took me a long time to get it myself, and I don't think I even fully got it when I was a student pilot. Now I do as an instructor. The whole point of flight training, the entire point of flight training, all of it, all of it, is to mess up, is to not be perfect, is for your performance, especially initially, to be far from pretty. That is the whole point of getting in an airplane with a flight instructor and going flying. Because if you were perfect and if you were everything was pretty and great, you don't need a flight instructor. You're paying a lot of money for someone to sit there next to you and walk this journey with you in order to take you from, let's just be blunt for a second, horrific performance. And it's not horrific in the sense that you don't you can't do something right. It's horrific in the sense that this is new to you. You've never landed an airplane. So yes, it will look horrifically scary maybe, your first few landings. So the whole point of this journey of showing up to an instructor and saying, here's a bunch of money. The whole point of doing that is for this instructor, for this person to take you from this place where you start out of things not looking pretty, of things not looking great, of things uh, being messy, of falling behind the airplane, of not getting everything right, to move you and help you along this journey to where you move to a place where not only you could do all those things without the instructor, and that's the goal, but where you could do those things phenomenally well. You know, when I first became an instructor, I thought, they don't teach you this in flight school, when I first became an instructor, I really thought that my job is going to be to teach people how to fly. I thought my job was to take someone who doesn't know or can't yet fly an airplane and teach them how to fly an airplane. And today I realize, after doing this for years, I realize that my job is not to teach people how to fly. That's a byproduct of what I'm doing. But my job is to teach people how to learn, how to control their emotions in situations that are stressful at times, how to be able to shake off a mishap if something gets to you emotionally, let's say you messed up a landing, how do you shake that off? So now your brain is, now your brain is able to actually learn more things in that lesson. 
I completely underestimated what my job's going to be. I thought I'm going to teach people how to fly. Here's how you land an airplane. Here's how you take off. Here's what this button does. These are all pretty stuff. But the big work that the, the, if you talk to anyone who, I don't talk for everyone, if you talk to most of my students, I will confidently tell you that they will tell you that the biggest thing they took away from training is so much more than just flying an airplane. It's how do I control my emotions when I'm feeling a certain way? How do I, what do I do when I feel like I'm falling behind the airplane? Mentally, right? And so that's my job. And so there's a lot that goes into flight training. And because there's so much that goes into flight training, don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself a break. And you hear me say this in the videos all the time with my students. Mishaps, messing ups, mess ups, um, uh, things that are done not as good as we wish for them to be. These should be opportunities for us to get excited, to be happy. And the reason that we should get excited is because th when we mess something up, that there's nothing better than a mess up in terms of a learning experience and a learning opportunity. When we mess up a landing, there's few things in the world that will make us not do that again than a bad landing. And you could be the greatest instructor in the world, but a bad landing is a phenomenal, phenomenal learning experience. It's not the only learning experience. It's not the only way you should learn how to land. But it's a phenomenal way to show you what a bad landing looks like and what you won't do again. And so these mishaps, these mess-ups in flight training, which will happen many times, no one comes into flight training and is perfect. Again, if you were, you wouldn't need an instructor. We wouldn't need all these hours of training. So when I say give yourself a break, I really mean understand what the purpose of showing up to flight training in the first place is. And the purpose, that purpose, is to mess up, to not be perfect, is to do things wrong. And that is why you're doing those things with a flight instructor next to you who's hopefully competent, patient, trained, um, and understands what their mission is, right? I'll talk, we'll get to it. I think one of the questions here is uh, uh, what makes a great flight instructor? We'll get to that, right? So hopefully your flight instructor is an instructor who is able to provide you the space in which to do all these things. And if they are, if, if your instructor is allowing you to mess up, mess up and feel good, feel okay about it, you know? All that makes you is a student pilot. All that makes you is a student pilot. So. I know I'm, this is a, a, a long answer, but I'm passionate about it. The reason you are a student pilot and not yet a private pilot is because you're in the, think of it as the zone of messing up. It's fine, it's good, it's okay. It's, how, it's part of learning, you know? And so I hope that makes sense as an answer. I know it's a general answer, it's not something specific, but really if you have this piece, you could, you could master anything in flight training. But if you let things get to you and you are frustrated with yourself, Another thing I didn't mention, my client's um, average age is 40, 45. But the other thing about my clients, which just happens to be the case, is every single one of them holds themselves to a tremendously high standard. This is just the type of people I work with, which is a great thing in life. You know, these people uh, have companies and they have all these great things and holding yourself to high standards is phenomenal. But here's where it's not so phenomenal. And here's where this, this is where I have work to do with my clients. Every instructor has different work. My work is to take these people who hold themselves to such high standards and explain to them that they're about to embark on something that won't initially look pretty. They won't be perfect. And the more and better they understand that, the less hard on themselves they'll be when they do mess up a landing as someone who holds themselves to high standards. And so if you're one of those people who holds themselves to high standards, I commend you. It's fantastic. But don't let that part of your personality and your value system to interfere and get in the way of your ability to learn within the flight training world, within your precious time as someone who's learning how to fly. I hope that makes sense. That's my advice. Don't be hard on yourself and understand and appreciate that this is the time for you to be okay with messing up, even after you get your private. Mess ups are phenomenal learning experiences. As long as we're not breaking laws, as long as we're not dead or in a coma, as long as we can reuse the airplane, as long as no one get hurt, gets hurt, we all mess up. We all do things not perfect every once in a while, as long as we keep learning from them. 
that's really the attitude. So I hope that makes sense.